Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I have an empties for you. My empties bin is full, so I thought it was time to go through this, give you the mini reviews on what I have been using, what I've used up, whether I've repurchased it, what I thought of it. So all kinds of good things in here from skincare to a little bit of makeup, a lot of sunscreen products, some hair care products. So anyway, let's get started. Got a lot in here to go through. So let me pull out the um, skincare items first. <laughs> sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. Wow, do I use a lot of sunscreen? Serum, serum. I guess I go through a lot of serums. I feel like I have kind of my whole morning skincare routine here. So let me just do that in order so that you'll know what order I use things in. So the first thing I do in the morning when I wake up, well, not the first thing, the first thing I do is take my dogs out, then I eat breakfast. But when I'm ready to do my skincare or get ready for the day, I start by washing my face. I use the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gentle Cleansing Lotion. This doesn't have any harsh detergents in it. It actually doesn't foam up at all. I don't really use foaming things on my face because I want really mild and gentle cleansers. And I use this one in the morning alone because my skin isn't really dirty from the night before. You know, I did the double cleanse the night before, so my skin's nice and relatively clean in the morning. I'm just getting off any, any like dust or oils or last night's skincare. So this is a really good one. It's really hydrating and it's great for sensitive skin. It doesn't make my skin feel dry or tight and it doesn't make it look red or irritated. So I love that one. Always repurchase, have the new ones there and am using that up. All right, so then after I wash my face, I pat it dry and then I'll apply my vitamin C serum. So I used up one of my timeless 20% vitamin C plus E plus ferulic acid serums. This is the half ounce size. I love it that they sell a half ounce size because this is perfect for travel. So I've been taking this with me whenever I go like away for the weekend. I just pop this in because it takes up much less space in my travel bag. And this is a great vitamin C serum. Vitamin C is an antioxidant. I prefer the L ascorbic acid based vitamin C's because that is the form of vitamin C that's been proven to work in your skin with lots of different studies. This is really easy to use. It's lightweight, it's watery, and it soaks right into your skin. And what it does for you is that it brightens your skin, it helps to reduce age spots. It's also been shown to increase collagen production. So that is an awesome one. I'll link everything that I'm showing you here today in the info box below the video for quick and easy shopping. Then the next thing I use in the morning is my ordinary 5% lactic acid plus 2% hyaluronic acid. So lactic acid is an exfoliant. And so it helps to loosen up the glue that holds dead skin cells on the surface. And that's really good because as we get older, our skin slows down in its ability to slough off the dead skin cells. And when they pile up, they can make your skin look a little bit dull and you know a little more wrinkly. And I like to exfoliate with a really, really gentle daily exfoliant. I feel like just doing it every single day with a really mild exfoliant just keeps your skin looking so good all the time. And this is a really great one. It's so mild. It's so gentle. Again, very watery, very lightweight, just absorbs right in. Um, you know, I just got a question the other day. Someone wrote to me and said, hey, I just watched a video by this dermatologist or doctor, somebody who said that you shouldn't use vitamin C and alpha hydroxy acids together. Um, and I just wanted you to know because you're ruining your skincare routine. And I was like, well, Okay, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know what um, studies he was reading, but alpha hydroxy acids and vitamin C can be used in the same skincare routine. They're actually kind of simpatico together because they both need to be formulated at a lower pH to actually get into your skin and do what they need to do. So using your lower pH products together is actually better for both of them. It helps them both penetrate better. It helps them both absorb better. And there have been multiple studies done using glycolic acid, which is another AHA, with L-ascorbic acid-based vitamin C serums. And in the studies, there was no problem. There was no one deactivating the other. You know, the only caution that they ever had was that using two acids together, close together, you might have a little bit of irritation on your skin, in which case, you know, definitely ease in slowly with them, start with one and then add in the other slowly, start with a lower percentage or a lower concentration. But there isn't any study that shows that 
alpha hydroxy acids deactivate l ascorbic acid. So if you've heard that anywhere, if you've read that anywhere, that is not true information. I mean, the studies are out there. You got to follow the science and the science says that these work perfectly together, which is why I've been using them in my skincare routine together, one right after the other for so many years. And I've seen the results on my own skin. So anyway, just wanted to touch on that for a quick second there. And then the third step in my morning skincare routine, I also have an empty of. This is the Timeless CoQ10 Serum. I love this serum. I've been using this one for years too. You guys know I don't really switch up my skincare too much. I found the products that worked for me a long time ago and I just continue to use the same ones takes the guesswork out of it takes the risk of having a reaction to something out of it and I feel like these products have made such a difference in my skin you know it's just amazing the difference between 10 years ago when I started using them and now and I do think consistency is a key I think you really have to be consistent with your skincare um, over time to see the benefits. But what I love about this is it contains CoQ10, which is an antioxidant, but it works very differently from ascorbic acid. The way CoQ10 works is that it gives your skin energy. And so it fuels the mitochondria, which are like the little energizer bunny batteries in our skin cells. And so your skin can then repair itself better. It can produce more of what it needs to produce like collagen and elastin if it has more energy to do those things. So it's a really great antioxidant that I love and swear by. But this isn't just a one trick pony. This also contains Matrixyl 3000, which is a peptide. Different peptides will do different things. So I have a couple of different peptides in my skincare routine, but Matrixyl 3000 is one of my favorites. And so it's in this serum. And so you get two great active ingredients along with high hyaluronic acid in a nice lightweight serum. And I think these are like $26.95, something like that. So really inexpensive price point. They last me for months and months and months. So I love using that one as well. Then the next thing I put on in my morning skincare routine is CeraVe PM lotion. I think last time we talked about my morning routine, I was trying something else and I have it here to show you because it is empty. Uh, but I've gone back to the CeraVe. I love this. I've been using this for years. This is the PM version, which just means that it doesn't contain sunscreen. It contains ceramides and niacinamide and hyaluronic acid and glycerin. And those are four of my favorite anti-aging ingredients. Niacinamide is great for brightening your skin and reducing wrinkles. It's great for reducing age spots. It's great for firming your skin. It's just an all around proven ingredient that dermatologists swear by that's in all the literature. You know, you can't read like an anti-aging skincare article without reading about niacinamide. So it's in here, it's high up on the ingredient label, and it's a really good one. And then ceramides are fatty lipids that are found in our skin naturally, but our skin produces less and less of them every year as we age. But the good thing about ceramides is you can supplement them from the inside and also from the outside. So you can use a ceramide lotion and then it will supplement the ceramides in your skin. So it's a moisturizer. It replenishes the fatty lipids in the top layers of your skin. So that's a really good one. For a few months there, I had decided to try a different product instead of this one. I wanted to try this Vanna Cream Daily Facial Moisturizer moisturizer. This also contains hyaluronic acid and ceramides. This doesn't contain niacinamide like the CeraVe does, but it does have five ceramides instead of three ceramides. So I wanted to give this one a try. And I like this cream. I think it's pretty good. The one thing that I didn't like about it and the reason that I'm going back to the CeraVe is number one, doesn't have niacinamide. But number two, it has a bit of a shinier finish than the CeraVe. I mean, I definitely look kind of shiny with both, but I look super shiny with the Vanna Cream. I didn't mind using the Vanna Cream. I thought it was fine, but I just prefer the CeraVe a little bit more. So I'm not repurchasing this, have repurchased this, and used it this morning. And then if we're gonna continue on in my morning routine, then after I put on that stuff, then I apply my sunscreen. And I do have a couple of sunscreens here in the empties. Three of them are face sunscreens. They are three of my all-time favorites. So the first one is the Elta MD UV Elements. This is an SPF 44. It's an all mineral tinted sunscreen lotion. And this has been my holy grail sunscreen lotion for a few years now. It rubs in so well. You can use the full quarter teaspoon of this for your face and your neck. And it looks so nice on your skin. It doesn't look heavy. It's hydrating. So it's great for people with dry skin. It's water resistant to 40 minutes so you can wear it to the beach or if you're working out or if you're going to be like outside sweating, you know, working in your yard or whatever. And it looks beautiful under makeup. So it's the all around 
perfect sunscreen for me. It is an SPF 44. I do prefer a 50, but that is pretty darn close. So I've been loving this one. I did just find a new sunscreen in my sunscreen testing video this year that I love so much. It is an SPF 50 and it's really given this one a run for its money. I've been wearing that one every day since I finished this one up and it is the undefined R&R &R sunscreen. It's an SPF 50 with a PA++++ rating. It's very lightweight and fluid. It's also tinted and it's very pretty. So anyway, I've been using that more than I've been using this because this is more of a traditional lotion and that's like a really lightweight fluid. And that one is 40 minutes water resistant as well. And the R&R &R is a little bit less expensive. They're both great sunscreens. This has been my holy grail. It's gonna to continue to be one of my holy grails. It's not like I'm completely dumping it. I finished this one up and then I bought two more. So I'm always gonna have a stock of this. I'm always gonna wear this. This will always have a place in my skincare routine. But right now I'm just kind of digging that R&R &R one. So I'm wearing that one a little bit more. Another sunscreen that I finished up this month is the Australian Gold Botanical tinted SPF 50. This one was the winner of my sunscreen testing. Uh, I don't even know how many years ago. Was it has it been five or seven years? I know a lot of you guys are using this and you love it. And this uh, sunscreen is going to be much better for people with normal to combo skin. People with dry skin tend to find it a little bit drying. But this is another tinted all mineral sunscreen. This one is 80 minutes water resistant. It has that SPF 50. This one is like a thicker more cream texture, so it does sit a little bit heavier on the skin, but it does rub in beautifully. It comes in three different shades though. This one is the medium to tan. This is the one that I buy. It's a little bit too dark for me, but I love mixing this one in with like say my white sunscreens, you know, that leave me a little bit of a white cast. I don't mind mixing sunscreens if it's two mineral sunscreens. And this is a really great one to mix in because it has more of a matte finish. And a lot of the other sunscreens have more of a shiny, you know, dewy kind of greasy looking finish. And so this kind of mattifies them down a little bit. So this is a great one for mixing in with a lot of other sunscreens. Or you can use it on its own, obviously. Have purchased another one of those. It is in my bathroom. I actually wore this yesterday. I went paddle boarding. And so I put the R&R &R on first, and then I put a coating of this on over the top just so I wouldn't be super shiny. And then I felt like super secure with my sunscreen. There's something about the film former in this one. When it sets up, up, it is really hard to get it off. So when I'm doing like a water sport or something like that, I feel like this is just going to stay in place and give me that solid sunscreen coverage that I'm looking for. Another face sunscreen that I used all up is my My Shell Protect Sun Shield Liquid SPF 50. This one was the winner of my sunscreen testing last year, I wanna say. And this is such a beautiful sunscreen. This is a lightweight fluid matte sunscreen. And when you put it on, you don't even feel like you're wearing anything on your skin. It just feels so beautiful. It doesn't leave any kind of like greasy, tacky finish on your skin. I just love it. The one problem with it is that I've been getting so many comments from people lately that it's been irritating their skin. Like someone sent me pictures of herself and her face puffed up and she had this like bad allergic reaction to something in here. And it's funny because that, you know, it was the winner of my sunscreen testing a year ago. So many of you bought it. I never heard any complaints about it. Just praise. Oh my God, that's the best sunscreen. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then all of a sudden, just like two or three months ago, I started getting um, comments from people whenever I talked about this saying, hey, I had a bad reaction to that. You know, what do you think it is? Do you think I got a bad batch? You know, and I, I really have no idea. I have used these up. I've continued to purchase them. And I have never had a bad reaction to it. So, you know, I don't know why some people are. I don't know if the formula's changed. I mean, according to the label, it's the same. That said, I don't tend to use this one every day because like the Australian Gold, I do find this one to be a little bit drying. So I rarely use these for more than one day in a row because if I use them multiple days in a row, my skin will start to feel dry. I just wanted to warn other people that there is some kind of a uh, something going on with it because definitely people are having some kind of a reaction. And then the last sunscreen that I have in here is not a face sunscreen, it's a body sunscreen. This is my favorite body lotion sunscreen. It's Banana Boat Light as Air. It is the lightest, most beautiful formulation. This is a standard chemical sunscreen, it's not mineral. Um, but I've been using this for I don't know, three or four years now, and I love it. It's really good. So used up another one of those. Remember, sunscreen, dose dependent. So if you're sunscreening your body, let's say you're going to the beach, you need a shot glass full, 
for your entire body, not just a couple of squirts. All right, a couple of things from my night skin care routine. I finished up another one of these Goku Jun cleansing oils. Um, I use this on days when I don't have a full face of makeup uh, and I just have on like sunscreen and a little mascara as the first step of my double cleanse. And this is basically an oil uh, cleanser. It doesn't foam up. The way you use it is you squirt out a couple of pumps, rub it on your dry face, like rub it right into your sunscreen, right into the base of your lashes, and then you splash it with water and it emulsifies with the water and it takes all your sunscreen and mascara and dirt and stuff and runs it right down the drain. I do follow that up with the Hydro Boost Cleanser for the uh, double cleanse. I only have one of my nighttime products here that I've used up in this empties to show you, and that is my May Love Moonlight Retinaldehyde Serum. This is the retinoid that I use on my neck. I use a prescription retinoid on my face, but my neck is too sensitive to use that strong of a retinoid on it. So I use retinaldehyde, but this is a great serum. Again, it's nice and lightweight. It's a really bright yellow color, but I just squirt a few drops onto my fingers, rub it around my neck, and it really has kept my neck looking pretty good. I mean, obviously it's not gonna do as much as a prescription retinoid would, but it's what I can use and it keeps my neck from being super irritated. I love this. I haven't repurchased this one just yet because there's another retinaldehyde serum that I do love almost as much as this one and I had one of those. And so I'm using that one right now. It's the Aven 0.1. But when I finish that one, I'm gonna go back to the May Love because this one is much more cost effective. Last thing in skincare is my Kiehl's Ultimate Strength Hand Salve. I love this. This is my favorite hand lotion for moisturizing. So this has a lot of hydrating oils in it. It's got shea butter and dimethicone, which are occlusive, so they'll lock the moisture into your skin. So it's just a really great overnight like hand cream to use. And I love the smell of it. I think this smells like, yeah, it's like eucalyptus. Mm, and I love that eucalyptus smell. It reminds me of the spa. It reminds me, it's just so like fresh and clean smelling. So that's a really good one. I have purchased a new one of those. All right, let's do hair care next. There's a lot of hair care in this bin. So first up is the Colleen Rothschild Quench and Shine Restorative Mask. This has been completely out of stock for almost two years because of COVID. They couldn't get some of the ingredients. And the good news is now this is back in stock. This was a holy grail for years and years and years. But since it was out of stock for two years, I looked for something else to replace it. And I actually found something else that I do like a little bit better, but it is super expensive. So if you could never afford the other thing, which is the Orbe, then this is back in stock. It took the frizz out of my hair and made it so shiny and so manageable. I just loved it. The conditioner that I did find to replace the Colleen Rothschild was the Orbe Gold Lust Conditioner. And so I've used up two of the mini sample sizes. It is so expensive. But my friend Lisa uses the Orbe and she was always recommending it. And I was like, uh, one of these days I got to try it. And so I had bought this little mini discovery kit that contains a conditioner, a shampoo, and a little mini of their texturizing spray. And uh, that's the problem with Orbe is once you try it, you cannot go back. I dip my toe into the Orbe waters at first by just buying the little discovery kit. So it was like $50 for these three mini products, right? Which is also kind of a lot, but... Uh, I did love them so much and they did kind of transform my hair. I mean, my hair has never looked so good as they do when I use these. So anyway, I used up two full discovery kits, which is why I have two of the conditioners in here. But I love this conditioner. I don't have to use as much of it as I do with the Colleen Rothschild, so I don't go through it as quickly. Love the shampoo as well. The thing I love about the shampoo is most shampoos feel like they really dry and strip my hair, and they even feel dry in the shower. And with this, my hair feels so... I was washing my hair this morning and I was like, what is it about the feel when it's wet and I've just rinsed out the shampoo, but I haven't put on the conditioner yet? And I was like, my hair feels creamy. And I was like, you can't say that. Hair doesn't feel creamy. What are you talking about? And I was like, no, but that's... That's literally like, that's the word that came to mind. It doesn't feel dry, it doesn't feel coarse, it doesn't feel roughed up. It just feels smooth and hydrated and really just like creamy. So love the shampoo and the conditioner. And I love the texturizing spray. Um, this isn't really like a hairspray per se, but it can add a little bit of volume and it can help to you to have a little bit, you know, just more texture to your hair. And it also has that great Orbe scent. I did purchase the full sizes. I am using them, used them today. All right, so then the last thing in hair care is 
my e-salon hair color um, used up another one of these i colored my roots recently e-salon is custom hair color formula that's made just for you so it's one of these services where you go on the website you upload a picture of the hair color you have uh, you upload a picture of the hair color you want and they custom mix it for you so i've been using e-salon for i don't even know how many years five six seven years maybe to do my roots i go back and forth on using them for my highlights sometimes i use the e-salon highlight kit sometimes i use the drugstore highlight kit sometimes i go to the salon and get my hair highlighted i have been going to the salon because i found some Somebody here to use who was great but she moved away I do have a discount code with eSalon it's in the info box it's in all my info boxes I always have all my discount codes in there so anytime that you want to purchase eSalon or try it I think it's for first-time customers only okay I finished up a tube of grande lash I was using this this was sent in PR from Amazon so I thought I'd give it a try this does have a prostaglandin analog in it but I gotta say this didn't work for me as well as my Revital lash does and I've probably been using this for about six months. That's how long it takes to go through one of these. I use it on my brows and my lashes. It did really well on my brows. I gotta say my brows seem to be not filling in more, but they didn't lose any ground. But I feel like using this for the last six months, my lashes are so stumpy now. <laughs> I'm kind of bummed about it. So I'm back to using my Revita Lash. Speaking of lashes, I used up one of my Lancome Edol mascaras. This is like my holy grail mascara i love this i'm wearing it today so yes i do have a new one purchased here make sure not to mix those up this one stays this one goes i love this mascara it really is beautiful it stays in place it's easy to remove it makes my lashes look long and silky and also gives them more volume holy grail mascara if you haven't tried it yet you definitely have to give that a try and then the last thing in here are two Buxom full-on lip creams. I go through this like crazy. I use Buxom all day long. I love the, it's got like a little mintiness to it. I love the little minty tingle. You know, I don't think it like makes my lips like huge or pouty or anything, but I don't even think it makes them any bigger, but I just love how it feels. And I find this very hydrating. I use this instead of like a lip balm or anything because i find a lot of the lip balms can be actually drying and this is what i use as a lip hydrator the shades that i have used up here are seychelle breeze and dolly daiquiri i think these shades might have been limited edition that i'm showing you here you know i like them but they're very similar to a lot of the other shades that they have my favorite shades are dolly blushing margarita and hot toddy and that is everything from my empties bin for today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.